What is up guys, Yellow Gaming here, and today I am bringing you guys episode number 16. My MLB 17 The Show 30 to 1 Rebuild series on MLB 17 The Show. For those of you who are new to this series, this series is a series where I go through each and every single team in the major leagues, ranked 30 to rank 1, with the attempt of making each and every single one of those teams a playoff contender and hopefully a World Series champion. Uh, just recently we finished 17th, which was the Tampa Bay Rays, which moves us on to 16, which will be, as it appears, the Baltimore Orioles. They still have something to work around right there. Looks like they already have top-notch speed, defense, and power, but I do know that their pitching is quite bad. Um, but do, I know they definitely have some power hitters. Luckily, we start off with a pretty quality player in Machado. As usual, we're going to turn Jim Contracts off. We're going to turn this to auto manage, turn these to manual, advance through all this good stuff. Now go to spring training. Almost messed that one up. Uh, as you guys typically know, we're going to look at this roster. That's usually the first step. Um, yeah, definitely a need for some improvement here in the pitching. There's no real quality pitchers. Maybe Bundy could develop into something decent out of a pitcher. And maybe Kevin Gossman. But outside of that, there's not a whole lot of potential here for, for improvement. Because um, there's no real prospects here. There's no prospects. There's no talent. Uh, the relievers are really talented. Well, we have three really talented relievers. And uh, Givens, O'Day, and Bratch. I'm really happy with having these three guys. Maybe we'll trade O'Day because he's already getting up there in age. He's got a, big, a pretty big contract for a few more years, so maybe we can get some value out of him, but we'll see. And I like Brennan as a closer. I also like Wellington Castillo as a catcher. I like Chris Davis and Pedro Alvarez. Some big-time power out of first baseman. Uh, they kind of are the same type of player, to be completely honest. They're both kind of low-contact, high-power guys, especially against the right-handed uh, pitchers, so we might just utilize them as, you know, it's going to be tough against lefties. We have no real lefty hitters at first base, but typically pe people don't. So, uh, Jonathan Shoup, I actually like him as a second baseman. I don't mind him. He has some potential. He might develop into a low 80s, mid 80s. I'm not exactly sure how um, how high his potential is, but I know he typically develops into low to mid 80s, so I'm looking forward to seeing some of that development. Obviously, third base, we have one of the best in the league here with Manny Machado, who typically develops into the high 90s. Um, usually, I see him about a 97, 98, and we obviously have gone in before in rebuild, so I'm happy to have him back on this team and hopefully... He can put up some big numbers for us because we're going to need him. Shortstop, I do expect some change here with J.J. Hardy, a top-notch fielder, but his hitting stats are equivalent to that of most double-A AA or triple-A players, um, and I can't really do that with a major league player. Especially, I know shortstop's not exactly a hitting position, um, typically, but I, I do want to upgrade uh, there at shortstop instead of Hardy. Plus, he's a little bit older, um, so we probably just will look to not re-sign him in the upcoming year. Hyun Su Kim, I, I don't really know. Maybe we'll keep this guy as a pretty solid contact righty hitter. Maybe we'll use him as a utility guy out there in left field. Center field, I actually do like Adam Jones, and he's not hes not necessarily getting overpaid. $6 million is not that bad for an 84 overall player, so I'll live with that. And I do like Trumbo, too. I, I might be a little bit biased because, of course, I am an Angels fan. When he played for the Angels his first few years in the league, he was a pretty solid player for us. But he's coming off a 47 home run season. Now, obviously, I don't expect that same level of production. Uh, but if he hits anywhere between the 35-plus range, uh, I'll be extremely excited about that. And obviously, with his power stats, it's, it's at least a possibility. Um, so with that in mind, this team's not looking that bad. I would say the primary concern is obviously uh, the pitching and maybe a shortstop improvement. So as you guys know, I normally do. I usually like to trade a few of these guys away for one player. And we'll do it again just to make sure I have enough space. And then, as you guys are very aware... I like to move my way, for, for those of you who actually watch the series quite often, I usually do this, I go over here, pick up Otani, because Otani develops into a stud every single time, already a top 50 prospect, he usually goes to the top 3, top 4 prospect, but for some reason, every single time I get him, he develops into like a 99 overall almost every time, so, uh, Fujinami is usually pretty good too, it's funny, I've done this so many times, I just know who's good and who's not, uh, is Daniel Flores, if he's the A potential, I forgot, am I, okay, I'm tripping right now, Matt Weeders left, didn't he? I'm going to sound stupid. I, I I know I will. What team is he on right now? I know Yamada gets pretty good. I need to release a player. I'm going to like Wander Franco, too, especially with us needing a new um, shortstop. Yeah, Wander Franco would be great. And these other positions, we, we won't worry about it. What team is he? Okay, I'm, I'm going to just look real quick. Um, is there a player finder? Just so I'm not tripping. No, never mind. I'll just look it up while I'm, while I'm simming. Either way, I'll see you guys once we get to the rookie draft. And I also am going to look at what team Matt Weegers plays for now because I'm tripping. Um, but I'll see you guys once we're actually at the rookie draft. As you guys know, I'm a pretty big scouting fan. And I like getting some top-notch rookies. So hopefully, 
with whatever pick this Orioles team has, we'll be able to get a pretty solid rookie prospect. So I'll see you guys in just a second uh, once we reach the rookie draft. Okay, guys, we're just about to reach the draft. I did all kinds of scouting. Forgot to look at what team Matt Weiders is on. Okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm typing in right now. Matt. Matt. There we go. Matt Weiders. What team? For the Washington Nash? I Did I know that? I didn't. I don't know if I know that. Anyways. Um, funny enough, we're at 29 and 23 this season uh, to this point. Somehow, our pitching's actually been the highlight of our team. Um, we have the 21st pick. Great. We might have... Nope, we don't have a compensation pick either. Um, it's not looking that good for us. We did have a pretty decent uh, scouting. It looks like a lot of the guys got taken, though. Primarily scouted pitchers, obviously. I did, I did do one pretty solid trade... Uh, as well that I'm excited to show you guys once I get out of this uh, scouting but for right now let's focus on the top prospect who appears to be Alexis Lopez um, a solid righty 2018 ETA prospect out of New York 21 years old we'll get him obviously got to wait a bit until our next pick so we're hoping just one more solid prospect stays up there for us um, yeah, we got Henry Rosater. Uh, this Mark Shatner guy may end up being pretty nice, but I don't have him fully scouted, so I don't want to take that risk. But he probably will be an 80 potential. Um, under all likelihood, if he's still there, I will take him. And he is. We'll, okay, we'll take the risk. There's another center fielder that I scouted, but we might not need a center fielder that bad because that goes in. Uh, that ties into the trade I was talking about. Yeah, there's not the center fielder anymore. That ties into the trade I was talking about that I did. That I'm excited to show you guys. Maybe this guy will be decent too. So we'll, we'll send the rest. I'll show you guys the trade in just a second. Um, as we sign our draft picks. Okay. Ugh, this is not that good of a draft. All of them had... Like, all these guys had 80... Or these two had 80 potential too. And look at that. They went to 86. It's like the lowest potential you could have for an 80. This... this uh, was there any solid... No, this was a pretty crap draft. Whoa! Okay, I jinxed it. There's 199 overall, but second baseman, and he's only a 63. That's still pretty solid. And 99 potential, though. 99, I missed a 99 overall. I meant to say 99 potential. Also, a 96 potential center fielder. Okay, now there's a few studs out there. So, okay, never mind. The, the blue chips were... Okay, the blue chips were really good, but everybody else was really bad. But damn, I might, I might make a move for some of these blue chips. I know you guys are talking about how you want to see another... Uh, another 30 to 1 rebuild where I do, like, the majority of... My team has has to be like either drafted by me or a certain age. I've seen a lot of challenges like that. What I'm thinking I might do is think about it this way. I'm halfway through this this 30 to 1 rebuild. I'm only two or three months into this game being released. So I'm thinking once I finish this 30 to 1 rebuild, because I've been kind of grinding it out. Well, I'm going to start posting these things like once every other day, considering that. Uh, well, I'm trying to win 95 overall. Considering that. Um, what's it called? 2K and Madden aren't coming out for a few more months. So I have no games to play. I'm thinking about just doing this like every other day and then uh, and then once I finish that 31 rebuild then doing like a challenge 31 rebuild where I have to do it a certain way you guys tell me what you think about that obviously I'm just brainstorming I'm thinking whatever DS I have because I've just been having fun with this and there's been an obvious amount of support but uh, that's just a random thing I wanted to involve you guys with either way we're going to spend the rest of the season like we normally do currently sitting at 29 and 23 puts us only a game and a half out of our division and about a game or two on top of the uh, wild card so i'm feeling pretty comfortable with that situation i don't know if we'll be able to keep it up because like i said the majority of the reason we're winning is because of our pitching and with our pitching uh being primarily pretty low overalls i doubt they're going to remain extremely successful but i'll see you guys once we reach the postseason we'll see if we somehow snuck our way in there uh and then we'll figure out free agency and offseason moves from that point i'll see you guys in just a second okay guys we're one game from the end of the season currently sitting at an 87 and 74 record this is kind of funny because we actually were struggling big time. We were at like 43 and 50 uh, after starting off really strong because we started losing a ton of games. Um, and we were we were barely even 500 towards the last couple of months. But look at this month of September. We went like 23 and 6 or something. Some crazy styling like that. Look at all these wins. It's like barely any L's in between them. Uh, we're on a streak here where we won, what is that, like 10 games in a row. And then right here we're on a three-game win streak. About to hopefully sweep Tampa Bay. But regardless... We got a game up on the Red Sox. So we clinched a postseason appearance. If we win this next game, we clinch the division, which obviously would be a little bit uh, nicer because I don't want to play that one-game elimination against um, 
you know, any team in the wild card. That's not a very fun situation to put yourself in. The National League tends or appears to be a little bit more dominant this year, but we lost. We still took. We still won the division because thank God the Red Sox lost as well. Um. So, anyways, to show you guys just some things I've going on. I remember I told you guys about a trade that I did. Didn't show you guys. Completely forgot to show you. I actually did a couple of trades. So let's hop into transactions. We'll show it if we still have that menu available. I don't. Yeah, I don't think they do that anymore. Anyways, I'll show you guys what we did. Um. If we go to roster, primarily all the moves we made are, are centered around the center field position. So we have Harrison Bader now, Austin Meadows, two of the best center field prospects in all of baseball. Um, able to get both of them on our team for a pretty cheap cost. Now for Pittsburgh, who sent us, um, where are they at? Who sent us Austin Meadows. We're going to find Pittsburgh real quick. There we go. All we had to send them was our first baseman, Trey Mancini, who is a pretty solid first baseman with some potential but i know that we already have some solid first baseman already and he's only a b potential and Austin meadows like a, a mid 90s potential center fielder so i don't know why they would have done that trade i guess they just since they have Marte and they have this guy danny ortiz they're just like we don't need him but whatever i was obviously going to swoop swoop up on that opportunity i don't recall what team um what's his face bader played for but i recall we didn't trade anything really for him yeah, like nothing. We I think we traded like a B potential. Oh, no, we traded Wander Franco. That's right. We did trade something pretty nice. We traded that shortstop that we picked up in free agency. The one with the uh, the A potential. We traded him for um, Harrison Bader because I liked Bader more, to be honest. Wander Franco was, was improving really slowly, and Bader was improving really quickly. So I decided that he was the better idea for us. Um, so that being the case, Otani also moved up to an 83 overall. So that's always something to be happy about. Uh, but regardless, here we are in the first year of playoffs. And we actually made it through the ALDS in the first year. Um, awesome. I, I, I don't know how we did that, but we got swept in the second round. Still, we, we came within about 10 games of winning the World Series in year one. Uh, that's pretty awesome. In terms of retirements, I saw that... Um, what's his face? Uh, Bryce Harper retired in my last... Oh, God, I almost thought it happened again. Brian Harper, okay. Oh my, are you sure somebody said Bryce Harper retired last year? Are you sure it wasn't Brian Harper? It may have just been Brian Harper. But I'm checking now to see if any crazy player retired. No, it doesn't look like it. Any crazy players are retiring just because of an injury. Uh, either way, we need to sign some of these players back. This is, oh my, oh my God, this is going to be some money that we need to give up this year. Uh, hopefully, we have some money left up towards free agency but uh, i don't know if we will have any so right now we're going to focus on getting these players back and i'll see you guys once the open free agent market uh becomes available okay guys the open free agency market just became available um everybody we signed came back we were able to get machado for four years which i was really happy to do uh because i know in most uh, rebuilds i do he always becomes a free agent after the first or second year so i'm eight i'm just happy we're able to get him back for a longer period of time so i don't have to worry about him leaving anytime soon uh, positional needs for us in this in this free agent class is primarily shortstop. I want my new left fielder, and I definitely want my new pitcher. So, um, if we can just get a shortstop for like one year, yeah, sure, three million dollars. Ibar enjoy. I, I like Ibar too. I used to actually live right next to Eric Ibar when he played for the Angels. Like I used to live like right next to him. Funny enough, so I've had a few conversations with him before. Um. So I'm going to get Michael Branley here. Yeah, I want him as left field. I want to at least offer him a contract. Because I do like Michael Branley a lot. Uh, about a 312 in his last season. The past few sims, man, about, about 300. Or in real life, if you're doing that in the semi, about a 312. So I wouldn't mind having him. Um, and then, you know, just as a, as a, you know, a bullshit offer, we'll just give Jake Arrieta a contract. I don't think we have enough money to even sign those guys. Yeah, we can't even afford Branley. We can't afford Arietta. We can't. Okay, we got Ibar. That's cool. Um, yeah, we don't have a lot of money. I know we signed a lot of guys to a lot of money. Uh, in terms of that, if we're sorting by salary, how to sign Britain to some dollars? Because you know, closing pitchers are always going to get paid some bank. In terms of being overpaid, maybe Shoop. But I see potential. That's why I kind of gave him some money. Adam Jones, I don't really think so. The only person that's getting paid tons of money is Machado, but we need that because we need a star player on this team. 
Uh, that's rough though. Twenty four. That, that's a lot of money on the books. It is. We'll try to find a way to get one more max deal out there somewhere in the near future. Anyways, for now though, we can't really do anything like that. So for this year's free agency, it's primarily just maintaining consist or maintaining consistency with the team, and focusing on getting some players that can develop. Uh, obviously, we got some young prospects at the pitcher position on our team. So hopefully, in a year or two, those guys develop and become something good for us. Uh, but for right now, we definitely need some more pitching prospects. So I'll see you guys in next year's rookie draft. We'll try to have. A few more pitching prospects to, to draft by that point, and we'll figure it out from there. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, guys, here we are at the draft once again, this time sitting at a 28 and 31 record. So we're actually doing worse, um, but we did do a few moves. We did do a couple of trades. I'll show you guys once we actually finish the draft what I decided to do um, because some some players are developing a little bit more. We got a few guys who are still valuable in terms of trade value that kind of became worse. I'm just trying to ship them out, try to open up either some cap room or try to get some better players. So I'll show you guys all that stuff in a second. Regardless, following a pretty solid finish last season, we're sitting at uh, the 22nd pick right now. And with that pick, what will we be able to get? I'll be honest, this draft class is a bit disappointing. I, I didn't really find anything I liked a whole lot. Maybe just a couple of players, and it looks like uh, not very many of them are still available. So the only one that I really like a lot is this guy, Floyd Farmer. I guess we'll get him. His potential is really not all that good anyways, so that's kind of disappointing. Um, but like I said, not a very impressive draft class nonetheless, so we'll just continue this pace, get a few more pitchers. I mean, we didn't really scout any position players. Maybe this was one of those drafts where position players were the best thing to get, but uh, we just didn't scout any because obviously that's not our concern. Right now. We'll, we'll get that shortstop. We'll see if he gets any good. Um, oh, 894, 88. Okay, we got some. Okay, no, this this for, farmer guy ended up being pretty good. The 89 potential and 65 overall. I like that, actually. Um, look at this Arias guy. He's already got a uh, 88 potential. So that's pretty solid. Just checking around. See if anybody got some crazy high 90s potential. They got a 90 potential in the second round. That's pretty cool. 94 potential to catcher there. 97 overall or potential starting pitcher. That's pretty awesome. 95 potential starting pitcher here. So a few really good pitchers. I'm assuming those were some of the blue chip prospects. But that looks to be just about it. So, um... That being the case, we're going to continue to send the rest of the season. We're actually on the up and up right now, but I do want to show you guys some trades real quick. Uh, Harrison Bader and Meadows got a lot better. That's that's the main thing. Trumbo is now an 84, batting 289 with 16 home runs already. We're only like a month in the season, or two months in the season. He's doing phenomenal. Uh, Austin Meadows went to an 85 overall. Harrison Bader, who was a center fielder, moved into left field because obviously Meadows took over center field. We moved Bader to left field, and he has his overall one of like five points just because he's a left fielder now. Don't know why, but I obviously don't mind. So he's at 88 overall now. So now our outfield is actually kind of stacked. And obviously the, the main thing that you guys are probably noticing is where's Adam Jones. Uh, he's the guy we traded. We traded him. There wasn't a whole lot of offers that were really intriguing for him. Uh, but the one that made me the most excited, we could have either opened up cap space or we could have gotten a solid player. I decided to go with a solid player, and we went with uh, the closing pitcher, Sean Kelly. So far for us, he's 2-0 with a 1.54 ERA, so I'm pretty sure we made the right move there. So now we have two really solid guys coming out of the bullpen with Brandon and Kelly. And I mean, plus having Edgen and Collins and Bratch and Givens is a pretty solid bullpen for us. Plus Otani moving to an 87 overall. Bundy is still an 83, so I actually don't mind him. He's actually getting better, and Fujinami is getting a lot better too now with 77. Tillman's still staying a little bit lower there in overall, but... um. With our potential with some of these guys, we might be able to have a few solid pitchers pretty soon. But with uh, with uh, for a chance to actually win the World Series, you kind of need at least four or five guys. Maybe just four. If we can get one or two more solid pitchers, I'll be happy. Um, plus, we need to start hitting the ball a bit more. I like our lineup a lot, to be honest, but we just need to start hitting the ball. Um, so we'll figure it out. But right now, we're just kind of struggling uh, you know, collectively as a team. But we'll, I'm sure we'll figure it out. Maybe we'll still be able to make a postseason. Uh, it'll be a little bit tough to do it, but... Uh, I'll see you guys once we reach that point, and of course, we'll figure it out from then. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, guys, we finished the season at 80 and 82. Unfortunately, as you can see there, not good enough to be a postseason team. Uh, in fact, the worst team in our division at 80 wins. That's how crazy our division was, how competitive our division was. Uh, very talented uh, this year. Eight games out of a wild card spot, so we weren't even really all that close. Uh, we put ourselves in a position, uh, a position to actually make a, a uh, playoff spot. But if you guys recall, last year we finished the season really well in the last month. This season was not the same story. Actually finished off the season pretty poorly um, as the Cubs defeat the Angels in the World Series. So it became, you know, it, it happens. It's basically the situation that happens. Um, 
we got some big contracts that we got to renew. We got Bader, Otani. Hopefully, these guys sign for pretty cheap because they're still really young. But I don't know how, the, how they're going to be, if they're going to be a bit selfish or anything like that. But we'll have to find out. Either way, these are some pretty big players that we need to sign. Regardless, we'll be able to get them because they're under arbitration. But we'll try to get them for a pretty cheap deal. And hopefully, uh, once we reach the open market, we have some money to maybe just get one solid player to hopefully bring the team around. I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, guys, here we are in the next offseason, and pretty noticeable who the highlight of this class is. Bryce Harper, 99 overall, and then a pretty steady drop-off all the way down to 88. Um, if we're looking at our team roster right now. Obviously, players keep getting better, so it's hard to keep up with. Uh, Pitching-wise, we're talking to 88 now. we got 83. Obviously, a new pitcher would be nice. Shatner went up to a 76 overall, so that's cool. Had a good season as a rookie, 12-12 and with 3.22. I actually like that. I like our relievers, too. Uh, I like our catcher, I like our first baseman, I like our second baseman, I like our, obviously I like our third baseman. I don't mind Ivar at all, and then I really like our outfield. So, I, I mean, I really have no problems with really any of our uh, of our, our position players. So, I guess right now the focus, I mean, we can get Bryce Harper. Like, like if we have the money, like, dude, yeah, you join the team. Oh, interesting. Oh, thank you. Finally, they're going to tell me I can't afford the contract before it happens. I, I appreciate it when they do that. I would love to know prior to giving a contract if I can actually afford it or not. Um, okay, a one-year deal for these guys? For just a couple of million? That would make our, our... If we can't afford any of them. Okay, no, yeah, we can't afford anybody. Never mind. We are literally playing with nickels and dimes right now. Um, we have no money. It's probably because these players' contracts, year by year, they actually, I think, are, yeah, they're increasing. So each year, even as there's inflation to our money, it's going just to give the same players more money. So it's not really working out for us. So um, we signed all the coaches we need to get. We signed some pretty good coaches. So hopefully that actually makes an impact, and hopefully our players keep developing. If they do, naturally, we could just push ourselves into a playoff seat. I think we're pretty close already. Uh, but this, by no means, is going to be my most dominant team I've ever created. We just don't have the money to do it. Um, but still, based off the potential that we have, Machado could become a high 90s, and Bader and Meadows, the way that they're developing, those trades that we made a couple of years ago may end up being a complete game changer for us because those guys are on pace to become high 90s overalls in their mid-20s. Uh, so if we package that with a few other solid players that we have, I think we might be all right. So I'll see you guys... Um, I don't think we need to do the draft anymore. I think we've got enough prospects right now. Um, so right now we're going to focus more on midseason next season. That's what I'll, I'll sim to. And once we're at that point, we'll check stats. We'll see what we need to do, see what we need to upgrade, and we'll figure out how to improve the team from that point. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, guys, here we are in midseason. And to say the least, this season's going awful for us. Uh, we are 13 games out of a playoff spot, only midseason. One of the worst teams record-wise. We already have like a top five pick based on how we're playing. Um, which is weird because our, our team's only improving, if anything. Uh, I'm not even positive what fixes to make right now. Um, I'm considering getting rid of Sean Kelly. Yeah, yeah, we'll get rid of Sean Kelly. We got offered a trade actually before the season for, um, they're going to give us Adam Eaton for Sean Kelly straight up. And I was considering doing it, but I didn't do it at the time because we well, obviously we don't need an outfielder. We have great outfielders. Um, you know, we'll just set up our own trade. We'll look up, we need better pitching is what we need. This, uh, this Red Sox roster really has some pitching now, doesn't it? What do we have to give? For Sonny Gray. Got some solid pitching prospects. So we can pack some of them together. There we go and get Sonny Gray. Alright, sweet. I will easily do that. So now we have Sonny Gray to add to our lineup or to our rotation, which is kinda we need we need a better rotation to say the least. We have a lot of top prospects though. Let's just say we packed uh three top prospects in a deal. What are we look they would trade David Price for that? He's 10 and 1 with a 2 ERA. You would trade him for that. For these prospects, really? For just these two. You would give me. 
I'm tripping. They would like there's they wouldn't give almost anybody, but for some reason they're cool with giving some really good players. They would give me Felix Hernandez. Okay. Um Wow. This gives me a lot of options now, doesn't it? I can almost get Cindergard. If I added him, or if I added one of these guys, I could probably get. If I added Bundy, I can get Cindergard. Hell, if I even have this reliever Corey Nebel, I could get Cindergard. I could have Thor on our team. Should we? Should we get Thor? Yeah, we'll get Thor. There's a lot of options, though. I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of options. Can we just, like, trade fuck all these GMs? Because this, you have to admit, that was kind of crazy that they would give Syndergaard for that. I know Kershaw's, like, impossible to touch, but... Oh, with how much money, you know, with how much money he's getting, he's actually physically impossible to touch. Too much money. Um, this Giants rotation, I swear. Dallas, Keiko, Mass, and Bumgarner, Johnny Cueto. <laughs> That's just a dick move to have those... They would do Sonny Gray for David Price. What is it that they don't like about David Price? I'm going to wait, actually, because if he declines, that's not going to be worthwhile. And we're not a playoff team right now anyways, even with these additions. Next year we will be, but not this year. So we're going to spend the rest of the season, see what we can do in the off season to improve this team. I'll show you guys the stats once we reach the, off the postseason. I haven't showed you guys the stats. I noted this point, and that's been a mistake of mine, but... I'll show you guys the stats once we reach that point, and then we'll figure out next season what we can do uh, to make this team better. We might just have to keep figuring things out through trades, because we have a lot of prospects. But right now, I'll see you guys once we reach the postseason. Okay guys, we finished season 83 and 79, so we didn't make the postseason, but to put this in perspective, before those trades, we were about 14 games under 500. We finished four games over 500, so if we had that, that team and that roster the whole season, it, oh, it'd be a wrap. It'd be game over. Plus, Meadows... Okay, okay, let's look at this. Let's look at how some of these guys did. Manny Machado, don't know why he's bad lead off, but still, 264 average, 38 home runs, 96 RBIs, Harrison Bader, 237. That's got to go up. Um, he's improving a lot, though. Look at those stat improvements. Uh, 237 batting average, 26 home runs, 73 RBIs. Austin Meadows batted 313 with 39 home runs and 90 RBIs. Mark Turner batted 298 with 39 home runs and 130 RBIs. Chris Davis, 258, 35 home runs, 85 RBIs. 238, 25 home runs, 81 RBIs. 276 home runs. So a lot of big home run numbers out of our team. Probably pretty close to the league. Yeah, we love the league in home runs. Um, well, I think I checked this at one point, but we almost we might have broken the record for home runs in the season right here. I remember I made another. It was might have been my last rebuild. My team hit like 340 home runs in one season. It wasn't even fair. Um, how Sonnegar went 13 and 7 with 2.74, Sonnegar 15 and 6 with a 2.89, on Otani 15 and 8 with a 3.27, Bundy didn't do that good, Tillman did pretty good record wise, ERA wise, not that great. Um, any awards for us? No, Bryce Harper won it. Okay, that, that's a crazy, yeah, you deserve MVP, my dude. Don't even worry about it. Um, this rookie went 15 and 4. Okay, you got gold glove second base, gold glove left field with Bader. So, at least he's doing a lot on the defensive end. He's got great defensive stats. Got to give that to him. Um, Silver slugger third base, silver slugger right field, and center field. So, we got some talent, definitely. Um, but we're going to go and sign our players. I'm going to go to the open market. I doubt we have any money to sign anybody. But we'll figure it out once we reach that point. Uh, and so, I'll send right there, and I'll see you guys then. Um... So Trumbo, if you guys recall from a second ago, had probably one of the best seasons of his career. About a close to 300, 39 home runs, 130 RBIs, 88 runs, 185 hits. But he decided, despite his phenomenal numbers, he was going to retire due to being 34 years old. 
so I'm in a bit of a predicament right now because obviously that was a big building block for me in right field. Um, few big injuries. Jorge Soler retired. Matt Kemp retired. Strasburg retired due to injury as well. Torn rotator cuff. He's done. Ryan Zimmerman. Some big names retiring. Zobris retired. So that sucks major ass. That sucks. Oh my god, that sucks so bad. Who's our right fielder now? Oh god. Oh, that's so bad. Ivar's 35. He didn't retire. Chris Davis, 34. He didn't retire. This guy, 33. He, so why'd Trumbo decide to? That was like one of my favorite dudes. He had, just had to retire. Okay. That's going to be something we need to figure out big time. Um, but for right now, I'm going to resign these guys, and then we'll go back towards the open market. I just wanted to give you guys a little update that Trumbo won't be on the team for some, well, for some unknown reason, he decided to retire. So he won't be on the team. But we're going to sign these guys back, and then we'll figure it out then. Okay, guys, we're able to get back everybody we wanted to get back. So the team's looking good. Able to get Syndergaard actually pretty cheap, only $12 million a year. I was pretty happy with that uh, signee right there. Um, players keep getting better. Otani's at 95 now. He keeps improving. Meadows is 93. Like I said, Bader's 90. I mean, this team's looking really good. Um, obviously, like I said, not our most stacked team, but it's reasonable. This team is actually a reasonable rebuild, a team that could be made. Um, in terms of fixing right field, I don't think we have enough money to do it, so we might just do this. Move Mr. Kim over to right field. He's not very good. Okay, 72 overall there. $3 million a year, too, to be that bad. Oh, that's... That's tragic. Um, we only signed him to that deal because I thought he'd be a better right fielder. Okay, we're going to sign Rizzo just, or try to just because it's Rizzo. Can't afford him. Um, we're not going to be able to afford any of these guys, are we? There's a lot of really good players. Altuve, Bogarts, Felix, Chris Sale, Rizzo, Arenado, Garrett Cole, Castro, Corey Dicker. This is a really good free agency class. Puig, are you cheap? Even Billy Hamilton, I'll get you in right field, dude. Like. If, if this okay this is a solid for agency class this is exactly what I needed oh what do I gotta do to get Puig trade Kim anybody else getting way too much money we could trade Shoop because we still have Yamada that would open up a lot of cap space but he had 25 home runs last year I kind of like that and the amount has been more of a, uh, wait a second. How is all these players getting that many games played? How did Yamada play 144 games and Shu played 160? And Ivar played 130. I'm confused. I don't know what the fuck our team's been doing. Some magician shit, because that, that does not make sense. Um, or we, we, let's just see if we can make a trade for right field right now. God damn it, guys, sign your players. McCutcheon, I know McCutcheon sometimes is pretty solid. Doesn't look like he's doing that good. 33, we can take a risk, maybe he won't be that. We can add Flores, he's not... It's not a huge risk to get him, but he's on his expiring year, and that's kind of rough. Well, like Mazzara, too. Ugh, no, okay. Yeah, no, there's no chance we'd even be able to get Bryce. Oh, Aaron Judge is always a guy I like to get. I just gotta remember how hard he is to get. Uh, no. There we go. Yeah, there's not really a lot we can do. Turn to 92 overall. He's yeah, he's cranking home runs. We're not gonna trade him for anything. Um, I said we might just take the risk with McCutcheon. We're not really losing much. We're not offering much talent. So even if we lose him, only thing we lost was a, a quality. 
up-and-coming catcher, but we already have some prospects here, so that kind of sucks that we lose him, but... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. It's probably something to do with the money. So who's getting a lot of money? Probably doesn't deserve it. Maybe Tillman? Maybe Bundy? Yeah, probably Bundy. Stupid ass getting way too much money. There we go. So that cleared up some cap space for us. Um, so now we have McCutcheon. Let's look at our lineup now. Pitching, I'm, I'm happy with this rotation. Uh, I wouldn't mind one more guy, but we might try to do a trade for all that good stuff. Um, relievers are all right. We could improve that. Now that we don't have our secondary closer, we traded him. I wouldn't mind trading for a couple of relievers. I'm actually a huge fan of this lineup. So, uh, once we reach the beginning of next season, I'll show you guys a few trades I'm interested in doing. I'm thinking of, of a few I can do right now that we can hopefully do to make this team better. But I think next year is hopefully the money year for us that uh, everything kind of comes together. So, I'll see you guys once we reach that point. Hopefully, we'll figure it all out. All right. Here we are at the beginning of the next season. Obviously, talent-wise, players kind of fluctuating a little bit. But our team's looking pretty solid. Um, as I mentioned... Oh, Sonic Guy went to a 91. Uh, let's look. A lot of it's just because he's happier with the team. But I'm liking that. Um, wouldn't mind... We don't really need a starter all that bad if we have these three guys. Do still want a couple of relievers. I guess we'll just trade for a couple of relievers. I don't, I don't... I mean, we'll look at what we can get. Obviously, in terms of... Uh, in terms of getting a starting pitcher. But I don't really think we need to if we don't want to. Looking at guys, if you're wondering what I'm doing right now, I'm looking at guys primarily, not really, because if you just base everything off their overalls, um, that's where a lot of people will go wrong with doing trades. But if you look primarily more towards how they've been doing throughout the sim, because, th trust me, there's players I've gone where I'm like, damn, these guys are good. Or, like, they'll have really good overalls, and they'll just blow so much ass when you actually get them on the team, which makes, trust me, I don't think it makes any sense either, but it does happen. Uh, very commonly so do you want to keep both these guys we could trade shoop and make this trade go through but i don't know if i want to do that uh, i don't know yeah, that's a tough trade Okay, we can do these two. Yeah, for one prospect. All right, sweet. We got a few more solid relievers now. I'm going to go to midseason and see how this team is doing. Uh, obviously, if it's struggling, we'll make some more moves and see where those moves need to be made. But right now, I'm liking the way this team roster looks. So I'll see you guys once we reach midseason. Okay, guys, here we are at midseason, sitting at 55 and 35, which puts us one game out of our division. We're only the second-ranked team. I thought we'd be the first-ranked team with our, our team. Um, and... No, we're in the wild card. The best three teams right now are all in our division. In the whole entire MLB, the best three teams are all in the same division. Or pretty close. Pretty close to all the same. There's a few that are like one game ahead of us, but our division's been killing it, making it very difficult for us to earn our playoff spot. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what we can do to make this team better. Otani's doing awful, actually. Otani's doing god-awful. 6-8 with a 6.03. So I guess right now the sim's just not really working in our favor. I guess that's probably more than anything else, but we're not quite dominating to the extent that I thought we would. Plus, Meadows is struggling a lot. Um, Chris Davis is struggling a lot, batting 180. So some interesting stuff going on. McCutch is actually doing pretty good for us. And Bader is doing good. Uh, it's interesting. I'm hoping the sim corrects itself a little bit for us to, to you know, a bit more realistic of a standpoint. But we're going to spend the rest of the season. I think we'll still be a playoff team. But I want to see some more uh, winning. <laughs> so we should be better than this. But I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, guys. We're three games out right now. Or three games left in the season. 
Win, win, and loss. Right now, we're okay, we finished 92 and 70. One game out. These, okay, these two teams, the Red Sox and Rays, have been battle, battling for that number one playoff seed. It's just crazy that our division is this good. We probably could have won more than 92 games, but when we're the first ranked team now, we're first in almost everything besides speed. Our team is so good. And we only won nine. I, I don't get it. I mean, I guess our team on paper is better than it actually ended up being. It, I don't know. I mean, Otani struggled. Syndergaard struggled. Sonny Grace. It, it just wasn't good for us. Uh, Harrison Bader did phenomenal for us. 293, 33 home runs, 100 RBIs. Machado also doing phenomenal. Meadows turned it around a little bit. The average still a little bit low, but still great power numbers. Chris Davis turned it around um, as much as you could after batting 180. Andrew McCutcheon had a good season for us. Jonathan Shoup did pretty pretty solid for us. We like it. Uh, Chance Sisko did good, batting 250. Yamada bat just okay. Now I see why he plays so many games. He's DHing. That, okay, that makes a lot more sense. I'm sorry for my my lack of intelligence. I was struggling with that one. Um, almost everybody on our team though hit close to 20 home runs. Besides, obviously, Ibar was not really a power guy. In fact, a lot of our team hit 30 or plus. Um, so we're obviously have to go up against one guy in our. One team in our division ends up being the Red Sox. Looks like the Rays beat the Red Sox are in that last spot. Um, so it's a chance here. I mean, let's see if we won any awards. I don't. I don't know. Gold gloves. Okay, that's all we won. Um, I mean, right now it's it's just we hopefully beat the Red Sox to move on, but uh, we'll see. And we will. Yeah, we won seven to one against David Price. So Tawny actually pitched in a great game. Uh, almost just a full game actually. Pitched eight and two thirds. He gave up a run in the ball in the ninth, so we decided to take him out at that point, I guess. That's interesting. Don't even know why we let him pitch that long. But uh, now we got center guard, Sonny Gray. Okay, we're running a three-man rotation. We're going to win game one, lose game two, win game three, lose game four. Oh, no. Okay, but we'll win game five, five to three, center guard on the mound. 2-0 and so far through the postseason. I'm liking it. Um, here we go against Cleveland. I'm trying to think. Am I tripping right now? No, no, no. This is... No, okay. Never mind, never mind, never mind. This is the ALCS. Lose, lose, lose. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, now when you go on a four-game win streak, let's let's see. Win. Win. Okay, win. Ten... That was a high-scoring game. 10-8. And we're going to win 5-1 in game... No way. Cleveland blows a 3-0 lead. Uh, okay, we're going to beat them in the ALCS 4-3. That's crazy. So now we got seven games, obviously, here against... The 40, the four, I almost said the 49ers, the Giants, who, as I mentioned, uh, about a, you know, about a year ago when I was looking at this team, they have a crazy rotation. But luckily, we're going to get nine runs on Bumgarner when game one with Otani. We're going to get nine runs on Keuchel to win 9-5 with Sonny Gray on the mound. Don't know how we're doing this. We're going to win 5-2 in game three. We're at home for game four. Are we going to sweep the San Francisco Giants? Cueto is... 2-0, though, with a .61 ERA so far in the postseason. So, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Tillman's struggling a little bit more. But I really want to win this game. Because if we don't win this, then we got to go back up against Bumgarner. Then back up against Keiko, And then Game 7 won't be at home for us. So, we, this... You know, right now we're in the best situation we can be. Don't want to lose this game. So, I'm going to do the playful game, then go to quick bands. So, I'll see you guys once we're in the playful game. Not a quick match from that screen. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Here we are. 2020 World Series Game 4. Orioles lead 3-0. Oriole Park. I actually don't think I've swept a World Series before. It'd be crazy to go from 3-0 down in the ALCS to win, what would it be, 8 straight. To then winning 4 in a row to win the ALCS. And then sweep the World Series, uh, you know, team that you're playing against. That'd be, that's just ridiculous. Either way, uh, we're going to go into quick match. Pitch, pop out, pitch, ground out, pitch, fly out. I mean, their their lineup is not is not scary at all. I gotta be honest about that. Their lineup's not scary at all. Ours is. We have very talented hitters. When you have McCutcheon batting seventh, you know you got some guys that can hit on your team. We're gonna start off with a ground out. Machado's gonna hit a single. Meadows, remember this Meadows is a monster. Filler choice, okay. Chris Davis, fly. Okay, I'm alright with that. Like there's nobody that I look at in their lineup and I'm like, oh that's scary. Like there's nobody. Like, maybe a couple guys will, like, get a hold of the ball. But, yeah, I just don't see them scoring a whole lot. Ground out. Fly out. Ground out. Okay. Oh, shit. The number nine hitter is a two-run home run? Really? 
Oh, goodness. Pop out. Okay, that was lifesaver. Fly out. Okay, only three runs. We're all right with that. Eyebrow hits a double. Lead off double. There we go. Ground out. Strike out. Two run home run. There we go, Meadows. Or Machado. My bad, Machado. Didn't mean to, to, to say the wrong name and make you feel bad about yourself. A single. There we go. First and third. Oh, ground out. Okay, but still, 3-2 game. Single. Cost stealing. All right, ground out. Line out. There we go. Ground out. Ground out. Strike out. Strike out. Strike out. Fly out. <laughs> now Yamada. Come on, ground out. Ground out. Fly out. Okay, come on. Come on, guys. Somebody somebody do something. Not on their team, though. No. Okay, pitching change. Tazawa. Walk. Strike out. There we go. Strike out. Strike out. Single. We need some hits. Sack bunt. Why? Why would you... Who was that who sack bunt? Sack bunted. Shoot. Why would you sack bunt? Okay, there we go. McCutcheon with a home run. Ibar grounds out. Yamada grounds out. Bader grounds out. Ooh, this game four is not looking good for us. Single. Ground out. Mach okay, Machado's up. Single. Meadows. Fielder's choice. Okay. Davis. Double. Oh, great. Fly out. Home run. Strike out. And strike out. Down four and the bottom of the ninth. It's only game four. We can lose this game if we... Like, we could. And it wouldn't be a big deal. But, like I said, this is the best situation we could be in. I mean, not losing 7-3 in the ninth inning. But, we want to get we want to win game four. But, yeah. It looks like we're not going to be able to do that. So, I'm going to move on now into game five. I'll see you guys once we're in that menu. Alright. Quick manage. Here we are. Oh, here we are with Otani versus Bumgarner. They have a majority lefty lineup, so this might be bad for us, but he's going to strike out. He's going to fly out. He's going to fly out. So with a lefty on the mound, I, I figure we would actually do worse because most of our, our players are actually statistically better batters against righties. But if we recall, we just lit up Bumgarner and Keiko, who are both lefties. So maybe we're just rocking lefties right now. Fly out. Double. Sack bunt. What the fuck? Why? Why would Austin Meadows sack bunt? I, I can't with this game. I like if I'm quick managing, shouldn't I be able to tell you like don't fucking sack bunt? That makes no sense. Like it's frustrating for how just stupid that would be. Be like, oh, we got a number two hitter to get a double. Do we want a number three hitter to drive him home, or do we want him to bunt when he's the best hitter on our team? Let's just have him bun. That sounds good. Like, I wonder how bad we can fuck this game over. That'd be awesome. So I got Pete Rose, and he bet for the other team right now as my coach. Chris Davis, a single. McCutcheon, a double play. God damn it. Another single. An error. A f oh, a fielder's choice. Okay, we're going to get out. Double play. There we go. Now it's working for us. Strike out. Ground out. Strike out. Okay. Bumgarner's feeling himself right now. Pop out. Come on. Ground out. There we go. But Otani's feeling himself. We only have four hits. They only have two. So it's been one of those games. Chris Davis fly out. Walk. Come on. Single. Come on. Single. There we go. Run scores. Ground out. Okay, sweet. Fly out. Walk. Strike out. Single. Oh, yes. Runner thrown out. Oh, I just lost my shit. I'm... Okay, that was awesome. I was I was literally about to just get dead quiet. Because I was like, are you serious? Like, we're going to get a run and then just give it back right after Otani was dominating. But no, a, a beautiful throw by somebody out there. Somebody was able to throw him out. I like it. A single, a single. Meadows. If you bunt again, I'm going to shoot you. Okay, you strike out. I'm honestly happier with that than you bunting. Because at least you're swinging the bat. Strike out, strike out, fly out. Okay, it's still only a 1-0 game. Got to keep that in mind. McCutcheon, strike out. Double, okay. Strike out. Single. We're not going to let Otani pitch this out. We have Zach Britton for a reason. They have three lefties coming up. Britton is a lefty. This should be the moment he's waited his whole career for. Strikeout. Strikeout. Now we are going to enter the game. With Yonder Alonso up to bat. With their two outs in the bottom or in the top of the ninth. Excuse me. A 1-0 lead for the Baltimore Orioles in Game seven, or game 5 of the World Series. Currently up 3-1 in the series. 
Who's against this all? Yep, Yonder Alonso versus Zach Brin. Who is going to win this matchup? If Alonso gets a hold of a ball right now, it could completely change the whole pace of the series. But obviously, if Brin gets him out, the series is over. There we go. Second beautiful pitch there. A 0 2 count. Britain, we're going with the outside sinker. Outside corner right here. Can we get him with it? He's going to swing, but he's going to make some contact. Going to go slightly foul there. Now a 0 2 count once again. We could hit him with a high and inside forcing fastball. Not exactly Britain's specialty, but can we see if it works? Once again, jamming him inside. Setting up a pretty nice opportunity for the slider to work a little bit low and away. We're going to let it move a little bit out of the strike zone. Let's see what we can do. Okay, that caught a little bit too much of the strike zone. Obviously, Alonzo probably a bit nervous in the situation, understandably. It's a bit of a pressure situation for him to hit. Not making very good contact, just trying to stay alive. Obviously, not trying to be the last one to get out in the World Series. But he will be, as right here, the two-seam fastball will hit the outside part of the plate, just barely making its way into the strike zone. Britain will strike him out, looking. Yonder Alonzo being the last out of the World Series. And the Orioles are celebrating... After a phenomenal comeback in the ALCS against the Cleveland Indians, putting them an opportunity to actually win the World Series, they're going to come out and do so with a 4-1 to one series win against the San Francisco Giants. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button below. Make sure to comment your opinion of the series and what I could do to make it more interesting in the comment section below. And lastly, subscribe if you have not already to stay tuned to this series and other series I got going on my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.